Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the select command in R. This is a powerful tool for reducing the number of columns in a data frame or rearranging them to suit your needs. It's part of the dplyr package, which is included in the tidyverse family of packages. So in order to use it, we have to start with the command library tidyverse. And that'll load up several other packages in addition to dplyr. They're all useful in their own ways. Um, I've already pulled up the help file for the select command there in the lower right with question mark select. You can read through that at your leisure if you like. Um, I want to work through just a bunch of examples. I think that's the best way to get to know this command. Most commands in R. I want to look at the msleep dataset that's included in the ggplot2 package. Um, I've already pulled, up, pulled it up in the viewer here. We can learn a little bit more about it with question mark msleep. There we go. So, sort of where the data is from and what the format is, what the units for the different variables are. Okay, so let's get started with select. The basic syntax is that the first argument is the name of the data frame. This is completely typical for dplyr verbs, by the way. You always give it a data frame as the first input and you get a data frame out. After um, the name of the data frame, you just need to pass select the names of the variables that you want to keep. So let's say we want to keep name, genus, and vor. There we go. You can see that we got out a data frame, technically a tibble, but for most intents and purposes, those are the same things. Um, it's kind of ugly here in the console for um, future examples. We're going to want to try and put that in the viewer, so we'll do that. Again, notice that we got a data frame out of the select command. Notice that it threw away all of the variables that I did not name there. So the default here really is reducing the size of your data frame, reducing the number of columns. Also notice that there are no quotes around the names of these variables. That's also typical in dplyr, and in fact throughout the tidyverse. Okay, so um, that syntax is going to get a little bit unwieldy as we go through um, slightly more complicated examples. So sl let's switch over to using the pipe operator. So I'm going to do msleep and then pipe that into the select command. Remember, the pipe operator takes the argument that comes before the pipe, in this case msleep, and passes it to the next function as the first argument. And the idea here is now we can read it more like a sentence. Start with msleep and then select certain things from that, as opposed to a sort of sandwich structure that we have up here, where you have to kind of read it from the inside out. All right, so once again, let's just select those first three columns. This time I'm going to do it in a slightly abbreviated way. I'm going to do um, from name up to vor. So I used a colon to indicate that I should start with name and go all the way up to vor. Finally, I'm going to pass this to the view command so that I can see it there in the viewer in the upper left rather than just as a, um, something in my console. There we go, those three variables that I wanted. Okay, so um, we can do a lot with this. For instance, we can say that we just want column one and columns five to seven. Five to seven. There we go. So you can work with columns by numbers. We can also specify columns that we want to leave out. So suppose we're evildoers and we don't want the conservation column. Using the up arrow to get the previous command. I'm going to leave out that column only with minus conservation. So subtract that out. There we go. We're no longer concerned with the conservation status of these animals. OK, let's move around some variables. Suppose that we want the vor variable at the very beginning. So the long way to do this would be to do vor, comma, name, comma, genus, comma, order, etc. Or to use the colon to do that. Um, there is a quicker way. There's a helper function in here that's very much worth knowing, which is everything. And you need an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis. So what it did is it moved the vor variable first, put that first, and then after that, put everything else. Notice that vor is, has, is no longer in its previous position, so it's not repeated. I think probably the name for the everything helper function should be everything else. So bear that in mind. Let's see here. We can also um, rename 
columns if we like as we go. It's a little bit unwieldy to do it that way. I'll just show it. Suppose instead of vor, we want um, to name that meat eater. So we do meat eater equals vor, and that'll rename the column exactly like we would hope. Again, that's usually not the best way to, to rename columns. You can usually do that directly, but um, it's worth knowing that you can do that. Two other helper functions I want to point out. So here in this data frame, we have several variables that start with sleep. Suppose that we're only interested in those variables. Now, of course, we could list them individually or use um, this colon operator to get them in a row, but um, that might not be the best for some applications. These variables might be all spread out, for instance. There might be a lot of them that start with sleep. We might not want to go through and do it manually. So um, going back up to get to the basic command I'm using, I want to select only the columns that begin with the word sleep. So the helper command here is begins with parenthesis quote, or it starts with, sorry. Starts with parenthesis quote, and then inside of that, what you want it to start with. So now I've kept only the variables that start with the word sleep. Now, maybe I also want the name of the animal in each case, so let's have that as well. There we go. Okay, one last thing. In this original data set, we also have a couple variables ending with wait, wt. Not too surprisingly, there's an ends with command. Ends with parenthesis quote, and in this case, we want wt. And so in this case, we should just get the names of the animals, the brain weight, and the body weight. And in fact, that's exactly what we got.